Hey guys, today I want to talk about is inflation eating away at the typical Filipino and American budget, the expat budgets. And from what I'm seeing over here now, it is starting to hit us a little bit. Um, people have been asking me a little bit, hey, what about the um, sweet spot budget, Steve? Is it, is, it, is it still the same? Is it still two to three thousand? Yes, two to three thousand is not a bad budget over here. Actually, it's really, really good. You can live very, very well over here on the sweet spot budget now i live just a little bit above that but sometimes i'm pretty close to that sweet spot budget and i don't live bad you know um with that amount of money i live a comfortable very comfortable life over here where um not suffering um i can send my girlfriend's daughter to college um it covers my electric bill my ac my food i give my girlfriend a little bit of extra money but I do feel the squeeze a little bit. There is a little bit of a squeeze I notice um, when I go out to buy paints. I go to buy things at the hardware store at Ace Hardware. I do notice food prices going up and restaurant prices have, have gone up exceptionally at, at places that are like American foods. Prices have gone up. I notice um, Chili's, um, some of the other places, they're going up. They're definitely starting to hurt a little bit. I'm going to go to some place where it's a little bit less windy because it's very, very windy here, as you can see here. It's, it's a beautiful day, though. But anyway, I want to talk about this a little bit because I noticed that the Filipinos who are living on, I would say, anywhere between 600 to 1,000 um, U.S. a month. That's about the average home around this area. That's about what they make, probably. And I do notice that they are suffering. I do notice people asking, hey, Steve, can you help me out a little bit? You know, I do notice some of the people from the squatters areas hitting me up for money a little bit more. <clears throat> and um, I do notice a lot more people on the streets hitting me up for money once in a while. And I understand I'll give them a few pesos or whatever, a 20 peso note or a 50 peso or a 100 peso note every on occasion. Um, but I do see Filipinos that live in my area, um, I do see like a, a little bit of a slowdown, like an economic slowdown a little bit. And it does concern me a little bit because over here I notice people prof, the people's profits on things that they sell is just minute um, because they're competing with so many people around here. So the profits are very slim. And sometimes people, other Filipinos will say, well, hey, I'll offer you this for it. And they might be making just like very a very small amount, but they don't want to lose the sale. So they'll they'll sell it for that price or what have you, you know? And that's why a lot of Filipinos, I think, suffer because if they own stores or sorry, sorry stores, people start putting things on, you know, hey, can I pay you at the end of the month or whatever? And then they pay them at the end of the month or sometimes they drag it up for another month. Well. I don't really have that much money. I had to pay some bills and stuff. And, you know, I guess you're last on the totem pole or whatever. And that's, it's kind of sad that that's why you don't have a sorry, sorry store over here because otherwise you'll have nothing after a while. There was actually a guy up in Manila. They did a video on him and he let people put a lot of stuff on credit. And within two years, his shelf started emptying because he couldn't go out to buy more goods because he didn't have the money because all the people that owed him money on credit hadn't paid him. They took off, they moved, or what have you. But as far as Americans over here, you know, most people, like on Social Security, we got the 8.7% raise or whatever, and the people that are on um, pensions, military pensions, municipal pensions, um, VA disability, Social Security disability pensions, what, ha what have you, they've all got that those raises. So they're, all, they're okay pretty much. Um, People in the lower budgets over here, the, the people that are um, on the thousand to fifteen hundred, are probably suffering a little bit, but they're living normal. Okay, they're not. They have their Wi-Fi, they have their little house, they have their AC. They're still eating decent foods. They still have able, can able to squeeze by a, a little bit of insurance money or whatever, and they're living pretty decent. And that's what you you, you really need over here. You know, when people talk about these budgets. Of a thousand or less that's insanity it's just insanity you definitely need a thousand dollars or more and I, I I don't I don't recommend anybody living on anything less than you know 1500 to 2000 I really don't because I think it's crazy 
I think there's people that come over here, they do squeeze out on the small budgets, but they, their living standards are, are a little bit less. They, they can live average like me and you can still squeeze by on a thousand if you're living alone or with a girlfriend or something. Uh, if you're not going out and going crazy, you're kind of a homebody. Thousand dollars is pretty easy to do over here if you got a 60, 80, or 100 dollar apartment, AC, um, you got the cheaper insurance or what have you. It's pretty easy to do and you can, you can do it but I don't recommend it because it's not really living. You're not going out. You can't go to the movies. You can't go up to Mall of Asia. You can't travel much. You can't go on vacation. But some people live like that because they want to save. And we, we, we did another, I, I have another video, either I, either I put it out already or it's, it's coming out um, pretty soon about saving in the Philippines. Philippines is a great place to save, by the way. But with inflation coming up, I'm starting to see, you know, it's getting a little bit tighter. You know, at some point, we may have to, you know, budge up the um, the sweet spot budget to, you know, two thousand to three thousand five hundred or something. I, I I don't think two thousand is a bad place to live here. Now, when I say the sweet spot budget um, is a, a, a safe, good budget, I'm talking about that's for like two people. Okay, I think it's pretty easy for two people and kids possibly to live on that budget over here. I don't think you're just eking by. I think you're living pretty well, but I'm talking about to live well here. And a lot of guys, when they're talking about their budgets, they're talking about, well, I can live on 600, I can live on a thousand, but that's not living like a retiree should live. Most retirees want to get out. They want to go shopping with their girlfriend. They want to go take their girlfriend out to the movies, go on a trip, go stay at a resort, things like that. Nobody wants to retire on a, on a low ball budget, nobody. And, you know, when you're 60 years old and you find out that you're only going to get 1000 on retirement or 1200 or 1500 on retirement, you're pretty much done. Um, you're pretty much stuck at that spot. So then you got to try to figure out how to live, you know, on that amount of money. And everybody always asks me, hey, Steve, is it possible? Should I come over there? You know, I hear a lot of people say, I'd rather live in the Philippines on $1,000 a month and in the US and be homeless because over there the housing is so expensive. And that's true, that's a truism. You know, it's very, very true that, you know, back home you could not live on 1,000 or 1,200. People do, but they get, they're subsidized or their housing is subsidized or whatever, or they get some sort of extra income or they get food stamps or something like that. And that's different, okay? Over here, can you live on that amount and can you live is it better than scraping by back home? Yes, absolutely. It's way better than living in the United States. I've seen people back in Lawrence, Massachusetts that were retired or, you know, they were disabled or whatever. And some of them were living on the streets or living in really crappy rooming houses or what have you. Nobody wants to live like that. Nobody. But over here, yes, inflation hasn't hurt us that much that you still can't live off a thousand. But like I said, I wouldn't want to see people come over here and don't rush over here thinking, well, geez, Steve said we can live on a thousand over there. It's not good living. It's not. You know, it's sitting home, having Wi-Fi in your house, playing on your computer. Yeah, you can you can live in a place similar to mine. And if you come over here, you need some emergency money. Um, you need some backup funds. Um, you need a, an emergency plan to get out of here. You need the same things. I know you, you, you're not going to have that much. It might be worth putting some money aside if you are going to do something like that. And like I said, I don't recommend people coming over here and trying to live off a thousand. If you come over here, you need to have some emergency money, an evacuation fund, and your emergency fund. Please remember to have that. Even if it means you have to stay home for an extra year and do a security guard job or something like that, do it. You know, I worked for four years before coming over here doing security work, you know, day and night. I was working seven days a week. I had no day off at all. I was working all kinds of hours. I was, and I like doing security guard work on the weekends. I did that so I could pump up all my money to come over here and have all my plan ready to roll and, and, and in effect working. You know, everything was, 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 was rolling. It was ready to go. And you guys can do the same thing. Don't forget that you can do it pretty easily. And inflation is not going to hurt you that much over here as it does home because if you're on Social Security, you get the raises. If you're on VA disability, you get the raises. If you get most municipal uh, 
retirement funds, you get some sort of um, raise or whatever. So keep that in mind. It's not going to hurt, hurt you that much over here. Now, if something happens to that and that dries up, the way things are going in the world, you never know. It could happen, but it's, it's doubtful that it will happen. But I'm saying then you're kind of screwed over here and you still need to have some money to get out of here. Would you want to go home at that point? I don't know. The United States would probably be in deep turmoil at that point. I think this, it would be crazy to go back. And I don't even want to think about something like that because that would be like the ultimate bad thing to happen to expats because we wouldn't even have a place to go home to anymore. You know, so what would we do over here? Now, as an SRRV holder over here, I can work, which is good, okay? I, I can continue doing YouTube videos. I can, I can even get a job if I wanted to. If I wanted to start my own business or whatever, I could do that. You know what I mean? So it's, it's just something to consider over here. If you do come over here, come over here and do it right. Do the SRRV video. I mean, do the SRRV uh, visa, rather. Come over on that. And I think you'll be better off than if you come over here on the tourist visa. Because if you come over here on the tourist visa, after 36 months, you've got to go. And if something happens and you know, everything hits the fan, um, you don't want to be on a tourist visa. You want to be able to stay here and, and keep on staying here because you might not want to go home at that point. You might want to stay here. But then again, it might be a, a, something going on over here where you might have to go home. But if both of them are in turmoil, then what? You have to have, you know, plan C or whatever. But not to, I hope that we never get to that point. I don't think we ever will. But just be ready, for, guys. I, I don't think inflation is killing our budgets that bad over here that we have to worry that much for, mo for the average Joe Blow over here. For people that are living on a very, very fixed income and it doesn't change, it might be an annuity or something like that, those people are going to hurt first. But anyway, guys, I want to talk about that a little bit. I do think that the sweet spot budget is is okay. I do think Filipinos are suffering a little bit more and expats to a certain extent, but it's not something that really we have to be really concerned about right now. God bless guys. Take care.